OG, I throw up the plate. And he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. And he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. And he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. And he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. Niggas don't know what to think. Don't I get money, you change. What you thought we was the same? Still stay away from them clones. Niggas better leave me alone. Talking about niggas is low. Cool. Run with niggas who don't know you. Whoa. I made that zagging when city to city. You niggas not hot in your state. If it was money to get a hit, Henny, we get it and never complain. Same go for the gang. And we split it up all the same. I can't really eat, let's stay straight. Cause we go way back in the day. My day runs from back in the day. They still hang around me today. You wanna come run us, you can't. I'm rolling, I'm loud, it's great. But mama, she bad, but complain. Cause I'm too in love with my dreams. And I gotta get on the plane. And go get this money with Gucci. I draw up the plate. Then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. The bank, Henny be all in my drink. You niggas is stupid, you think that should change. You not even hot in your gang, ain't nothing even hot about your gang. You niggas be lying about same, be posting them pictures of guns for the fame. Niggas just look at me different now. Say that's your man, but he a clown. But fuck around with the fuck arounds. Little nigga, you should cut it out. Me and my niggas take different rounds. Punch a bitch nigga all in his mouth. Hold up, my nigga, we different now. I need a raw, it's different style. I get a check today, I spent it all tomorrow. I get a bitch today, she probably a foreign model. Yeah, yeah. I get a check today, I spent it all tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I'm with my gang today, tomorrow never promise. OG, I draw up the plate, and he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate, and he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate, and he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang. I'm just a sexy boy I'm not your boy toy I'm just a sexy boy I'm not your boy toy Let's go! I make him hot I make him shiver Things get weak Whenever I'm around They see me walk They hear me talk I make them feel like the God ain't real. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. That's your heart out there. Mike flips up. Hands off the merchandise. I'm just a sexy boy I'm not your boy toy I'm just a sexy boy I'm not your boy toy I'm just a sexy boy I'm not your boy toy I'm just a sexy boy Boy, toy. Boy, toy. 
I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another edition of the Pocket Locker Podcast. I am your host with the most all the way from the East Coast. And as always, folks, I am in... airplane mode all right folks we've got another great show lined up for you as always uh i am in gather at the speakeasy if you'd like to join us uh that's where we'll be we're at the ranch in the speakeasy and uh let's go ahead and get into our communion ritual uh, if you enjoy the content, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. There are links also in the descriptions if you'd like to donate or uh, join our Patreon. All right, here we go. Please raise your glasses and hold on to your asses. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the flying man, all glory and honor is yours who fly for our sins forever and ever. You may drink. And for our communion song, we're going to go to Foy Vance, uh, the Cheers theme song, where everybody knows your name. Actually, let me switch this over. Here. As you guys can see here, we are in our gather speakeasy. Uh, it's underneath the, um, speakeasy's very easy to get to. See, it's called Cheers. Cheers East, this is where you load in to Bundy Ranch. This is how you get to the office. You're, instead of going into the office, you're going to go underneath the office, down into the speakeasy. Uh, that's where we're at. Looks like the Cheers bar. We treat it like the Cheers bar. Uh, and like I said, here is our theme song. In Dublin, and he's going to play us out. For you're going to play what to finish us up? Do you know what? I don't know the name of this song, actually, but I know the song, and so will you. Oh, I look forward to this. <laughs> Five bands, take it away. <laughs> Making your way in the world today Takes everything you got Taking a break from all your worries Sure would help a lot Wouldn't you like to get away 
Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You want to be where you can see Troubles are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name Well, all those nights and you got no light And the check is in the mail And your little I angel on the cottered by its tail You said fiancé didn't show Well, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name And you're always glad they came You want to be where you can see Troubles are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name And you too, Punk, was there Well, you get out of bed and the coffee's dead The morning isn't looking bright You shrink right off to your opinion He doesn't even write Your girlfriend says she's not a girl Be glad there's one place in the world Where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You want to be where you can see Troubles are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name You want to be where you can see Troubles are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name Vans. Most common word coming in by text Foy is goosebumps. Right. Believe it or not, we've had that repeatedly across <laughs> the whole series. Um, if you want to see Foy Vance's cheeky grin when. And the next one comes to us from OG Roddy, and then we'll get into our show. Whoa. Is that. Hey, what up? They know my campaign. Now they running up on Roddy like it's second place They wanna know if I'm a prop or I'm the real plane Landed in Austin and I even brought my own strain Gang, yeah, fuck is they talking about Link up with Freddy, got it booming cause it's Mo South Then we hit the spot, my OG had it packed out Getting love in every city, what it's all about Facts, yeah, know when I'm back home At the blueprint eating chicken with some bad Jones And they bad, but not like the one that's at home and she bad, but not like them kids we had, Lord, yeah. I'm still up in my mode. Hit my connect, he make the goals. I run the give and go. Just ask the ones who fucking with me if you didn't know. They say the plane was always on it and he always gone. I love you. I want to. You're the one that I live for. I can't take it. Told Jay I'ma just stick to the code yeah. He wished me well and told me how he been noticing growth Dang. Told all my niggas down on Serato, let's get this dough Figure your speech, I'm just saying my niggas gotta glow Yeah, I thought I changed up But in fact I just got better at the same stuff Even when I was a minor, I was major Independent, I remember how they played us Yeah, <laughs> you see it's funny though See how everything changed getting money, bro Seen them even throwing shade when it's sunny though I'm the plane, I ain't even in a lane, no. Yeah, but I still be on the road. Head to toe on all my merch, I'm smoking at the show. 
And they booking Henny too, I gotta bring my bro Wonder if and when I stop, I tell them never know I love you, I want you You're the one that I live for I can't take it anymore But I love you, I need you What can I do to make you see All right, all right, all right. So let's get into it, gang. Our first story of the day uh, concerns something that we really haven't talked that much about, and that's this George Santos guy who completely fabricated his entire life story, basically. He lied about he lied about not just which college he went to, what he studied and how well he did. He lied about going to college period. Lied about being one of the first people with COVID-19. Lied about the death of his mother. Uh lied about his work history. Lied about his financial success. Lied about his athletic um, background and it really says something about the moment that we're in that nobody's doing anything about it nobody feels they can do anything about it it's just a situation where people are like yeah you know this guy really sucks it, it sucks that he did that there's really not a damn thing we can do about it. Um, but fortunately, I feel like the people from his district, both the citizens, some of the local organizations, and the other elected officials um, in the area that he represents are actively, like, really trying to actually do something af about it. And I find that very encouraging, although I find their particular predicament very discouraging. Um, but overall, it's, it's, uh, it, it's pretty wild. And I really think it speaks to what we should expect for the next couple years. In particular, the fact that with Kevin McCarthy now being the Speaker of the House, it's just going to be some sort of trump shit show. And I think George Santos being a hard right Republican vote means that Kevin McCarthy and the rest of the Republican leadership in Congress has next to no motivation to get rid of this guy. And... I think it speaks to their moral depravity as individuals, but also the bankruptness of our system, that this is what we get. Now, any of you out there, just think about if you told that many lies on your job application. You'd lose your job. No doubt about it, you'd lose your job. It wouldn't even matter how good of a job you were doing. Or, or how great you were as a person, if you lied about that much shit on your resume, you'd be fired the next day. Like, there's just, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You would lose your job. Uh, unless you're a congressman and your vote is useful. Anyway, that's enough of me. Um, let's get into uh, what um, some of these people who are actually dealing with this issue are saying. So we're going to be. Ending District 18. Uh, we're joined by a number of uh, residents from the 3rd Congressional District, uh, Republicans and Democrats who are outraged at our absentee congressman. To give everyone a recap, the New York Times story dropped on a Monday, and in the time since, this group has convened press conference after press conference. We convened outside George Santos's fake Whitestone address, where he claimed he lived. 
We convened outside the federal courthouse in Islip, calling for an investigation from the U.S. attorney. We convened outside his campaign headquarters, where he hatched so many of his fantastic lies. We convened here just last week at his district office, and you'll notice behind me that nobody seems to work here. And the name of our former congressman is on the awning. We'll continue to convene and hold him accountable. Uh, it is clear from George Santos' own words that he will not resign. He has said that he's not going anywhere. And despite pressure from Republican and Democratic elected officials, despite outrage from constituents here, despite making local, state, federal, and international headlines, he refuses to go. I think what's interesting is George Santos went on far-right extremist Matt Gates podcast, and he said, I hope you have the strength that I have when they come for you. But what George Santos is doing is the opposite of strength. He's behaving like a petulant child. He's showing weakness, not showing up for the voters who elected him, not showing up to do the job that he got elected to do, but hiding and speaking only to those who give him safe comfort. We are here today to say that if George Santos does not come to the voters, then the voters will come to Mr. Santos. And that is why today we are launching the Where's George campaign. We are encouraging people all across Long Island and Queens, if you see George Santos in public, take a picture of him and upload it to social media with the hashtag Where's George. Again, if George Santos won't come to us, then we'll come to him. What George Santos has made clear is that he thinks these two years are gonna be a walk in the park. George Santos believes that people will simply forget about this story. He believes that he'll weather the storm and that these two years will be a cakewalk. I am here to remind you, George, that we will make every single day in this district a living nightmare until you find us. You will not be able to go into the bagel store you won't be able to go into the supermarket. You won't be able to get a bite to eat. Everywhere you go, we will be there to hold you accountable. You don't get to run for Congress and hide from the people who voted for you. You don't get away with being the biggest fraud in modern American political history. And we will work day and night to hold you accountable. Now, George Santos doesn't live in this district. In fact, George Santos may not even be a citizen. And I continue to challenge him to provide a record of your birth certificate. George Santos, we know, doesn't live here. But what George Santos doesn't know is that Long Islanders don't give up that easy. We're not just going to roll over and accept the fact that our congressman is a con man, a liar, and a fraud. We don't give up that easy. And we'll continue to join as Republicans and Democrats together to hold him accountable, to call him out, and make every single day a living nightmare until he does the right thing and resigns. And so again, if you see George Santos in public, and now George Santos, after a week of being our congressman, has a week off from Washington, so we know he's coming home. Let's give George Santos the warm reception and welcome that he deserves. And so if you see George Santos, upload a picture of him with the hashtag, Where's George? If George Santos won't come to us, now, chat. where are you guys at with this? Because this this is sort of reminiscent of what we saw a few weeks ago with Elon Musk, right? Where, you know, people wanted to basically make a commentary about, you know, his whole free speech thing and, you know, his lack of accountability or whatever. So they start posting pictures or, or sharing the location of where his jet um has been spotted which like even that like oh fuck is that where we're at with this economy like motherfuckers is out here having that hard of a time we got these billionaires running around and it's like yo how at me if you see their jet like oh fuck guess it's been that way for a long time y'all but damn all right but like okay so then and so now right so now now what what do y'all think about this because on one hand, right, like, I don't want to encourage violence. And I don't even really want to encourage public harassment. So 
when I first heard this kind of story, I'm like, is this, you know, I think it's newsworthy. This is certainly what the news is. So I'm just bringing you guys the news. But what what do y'all think, right? Because I do think on one hand, we don't want to start creating a world. Y'all know me. I'm not all about the naming and shaming culture as it is. But where we're like, yo, so-and-so's at the grocery store. So-and-so's at their child's soccer game. So-and-so is, you know, walking their dog down the street. And then you have people pulling up on them all the time. You know, like, y'all yeah, know me. I've been close enough to politicians to put myself in their shoes, at least. And I know I would not be okay with that. At the same time, these are public figures, elected public officials, Um and clearly there's a lot of fraud and deception here. And this man is just trying to, uh, they showed a clip on him on MSNBC or CNN, one of the major news networks the other day, but basically they was trying to like, you know, confront him in the normal way, you know, outside the office or in the halls or where, wherever they're supposed to be. And he ignores everybody and tries to basically hold up and hide out in his office. So I don't know. On one hand, I do feel like he needs to answer to his people, and I understand the frustration, but is there a way to do this with some kind of reasonable boundaries on this, especially given today's kind of extreme political climate? Um, again, I, don't, I nothing in this I felt like was a direct call to violence. I haven't seen all of it, but at least what the, the first part I saw that made me say I'll share this. Um, I didn't see anything that felt like, you know, way out of line or anything like that. But I just, I just want to know what y'all think about it because it's a weird, it's a weird way to go about this. But I, I do sympathize with the cause. So, then we will come to George Santos. Uh, thank you. And now you'll hear from a number of residents, all who live within the district, all who are uniquely outraged. Uh, and we'll start with two residents from. Uh, the group Concerned Citizens of New York's 3rd Congressional District, uh, Aiden Davis and Jody Cass Finkel. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to, here, come sit next yeah. to me. So um, I'm going to say a few words first, and then I'm going to uh, turn it over to Josh. Who's Training to see how much gaslighting they can do without there being a response from the left that they can use the catalyst to use arms. George Santos flashing white power symbols. What's that, YouTube punk? Yeah, it's always set up where they assume in the good intentions. But yeah, it's it's crazy. Look at the tree said, my gut says fuck that guy. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm a hundred percent on team fuck that guy. Um yeah, yeah. I just wondered if anybody had thoughts about that. I appreciate the chat. On our steering committee. You spell your name, Steve. Uh Jody Cass Finkel, J-O-D-Y K-A-S-S. F I N K. Hell of a name, Cass Finkel. So I wanted to tell you what uh, Concerned Citizens of New York 03 is Obama. first. It is an odd, ad hoc group I of love residents this woman's who energy. have formed in the last two weeks. Um, Me and this woman have a and picnic we're right united now. in our anger <laughs> about the, the deception that. I'm just here for the right wing anger, and she actually reminds me somehow of like uh, my prom date's mom. I don't know. Something about it has given me. I don't want to put names out there, but the same vibes my prom date's mom used to give me. Love that fucking woman. <laughs> but yeah, plus this woman is just, she's really laying out their cause. I, I don't know. She just, she just strikes me as one of those. She, she reminds me of like the real talk. This is what real political people in America really like. They just your fucking neighbors that's real pissed off about something or real passionate about something. They ain't really got all the training. They ain't go to school for this. They just trying to get some shit done right now. George Santos has um, has made this whole place a living, a living um, uh, embarrassment. And um, we are a nonpartisan group. We are not affiliated with any elected official. We are not affiliated with any party. We are not affiliated with any candidate. Um, and we see that we, are, we have a very, very narrow focus, which is just to get George Santos removed and then to have a free and fair election. We're not going to be weighing in on candidates. We just want to make sure we get rid of this guy. 
So we see that there are two paths to get rid of him, right? Two potential paths. One of them is to force him to resign. So he's made very, very clear that he's, plan he's not going to resign. We're very happy that all of our um, Democratic leaders now, y'all, as we lay out these challenges, pay attention to these two paths, um, because this is why there's a real fight going on here. And, and to me, this is very important. And she's right on the money. George Santos has been clearly asked to resign. That is what should happen. He should 110,000% resign. But he won't. He's refused to. He's vocally refused to. Ain't no ambiguity about it, no how, no kind of way. The motherfucker was straight up asked, will you resign? The nigga straight up said no. Okay, so this fight's necessary because let's be very clear, he has no intention of stepping down as to now, which means, yes, we need to turn up the pressure campaign. Have, uh, and all of our uh, Republican leaders have asked George Santos to resign. That's a great thing. But it's only half a step. It's not even a full step. Because if George Santos doesn't resign, we're stuck with him. What we need is the second path also, which is we need Congress to expel him. I know that's extraordinary, but these are extraordinary times. George Santos is a national story. He's a national embarrassment. We have never seen anything like this before. So we are looking to get Congress to expel. And the first step to do that is we need to have a united district. We need to go to Congress united. Our Republican leaders, our Democratic leaders need to join hands and say we, are, we want him to be resigned, but if he won't resign, we want to be very clear, we will push to have Congress expel him. With that in mind, Concerned Citizens of New York has put together a bipartisan statement on congressional integrity. I'm, I'm going to read it, actually. It's three sentences. The citizens of New York's third congressional district join with our Republican and Democratic local leaders to repudiate George Santos due to his lies and falsehoods. We call on George Santos to resign from his position as the representative of New York's third congressional district in the U.S. House of Representatives. We call on the U.S. House of Re Representatives to expel George Santos from Congress if he will not resign. So we have asked all of our leaders to sign it. And so far, Tom Swazi, Robert Zimmerman, John Kamen, Josh Lafazan, Melanie DeRigo, Rima Rasool, and Jay Jacobs have signed. We are waiting to hear from Joe Cairo, Bruce Blakeman, and Jack Martins. You'll see those are empty. Those lines are empty. And so yesterday we issued a press release, which we shared uh, amongst you, um, essentially saying if, there, if you're not willing to sign this, you're paying lip service to the voters of this district because we need him gone. We can't be here for the two years that it's going to take for an ethics investigation, especially now that Congress is looking to gut that. We need him to be expelled. We've confirmed with, our, with some uh, very well-regarded very well attorneys. There is no reason that we have to wait for, a uh, for a, an ethics investigation. The House can expel him now. That, the, the law requires that, or the Constitution, I believe, requires two-thirds majority to vote to, for, in order to get expulsion. We assume that we'll probably already have uh, hey, the, the whole her. Democratic caucus. We'll need 78 Republicans to join with the Democrats to make that happen. I think there are about 11 or 12 Democrats just from New York State. So we're going to be looking to our state elected oh, officials shit. as What's well. Up? As soon as we get all our local elected officials on board, we're going to be looking to our state elected, uh, our, our, Nash, our federal elected officials from New York State Good to, see you. Good to, to join see you. with Happy us Friday. as well. Because we're going to need them to make, again, to make a, a very clear... All right, gang, let's talk a little bit about these two paths. Because believe it or not, y'all know me, I like this politics, man. It's my game right here. It's a good game, but it's fucked up because it's not a game and this shit really matters. We got to stop fucking around. All right? He's got to resign. Anybody else resigns. But there was a really great story the other day about Nancy Pelosi's leadership in the House of Representatives when the Andrew Weiner thing happened. And yeah, the Andrew Weiner thing was some weird sex shit or whatever. Um, 
But when Nancy Pelosi had to take care of this scandal, right, she basically um, sat down with my mans and she was like, you got to go. You got to go. You can't be here. And he was gone the next day. Um, and so that's the stark contrast in leadership that we're dealing with right now is it's like the Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans, they so worried about that one vote. They really can't expel this man that everybody now knows flat out lied to everybody. Now, I don't really know how deep all of this goes because you have to remember these same Republicans are trying to cover Donald Trump Trump's tracks in the January 6th insurrection and his other fucking horrible offenses against the Constitution of the United States of America. At the same time, they're trying to cover their own asses in some of said crimes. Additionally, they're trying to pave the motherfucking way for more grift, corruption, election undermining, and uh, democracy deterioration. Okay? However, it definitely can't be ruled out at this point that either they're tacitly kind of going along with the George Santos thing because they know they can't afford to pull the levers of accountability against him because the shit would backfire against them. Or it's also not as likely that, that they don't have to do that because Santos could just be taking it from the flip side. He could basically just be finding him himself in a position where he's basically like calling their bluff, right? And he knows, given how fucking shady and corrupt that party is, especially its leadership, that all he has to kind of do is ride this thing out. Look, they're already doing some bullshit-ass committee about the weaponization of the federal government. Man, these fools ain't trying to have no damn uh, investigations into no uh, right-wing Congress people. Uh, what was the other thing I was thinking about? Oh, yeah, they're already trying to, you know, undermine the fucking uh, House Ethics Committee and all that shit. So he's sitting there like, look, y'all trying to gut the House Ethics uh, provisions? Like, what, what the fuck can you do, right? So it's real shady. Like, I'm not trying to put it on those conspiracy shit because I do think he's an embarrassment. And they don't really want to associate with him, but it don't really have to go that deep, right? It just has to be them doing what they're already doing to cover their asses and stick to their alt-right playbook. And so based on that, they can't really uh, hold his feet to the fire. And then on the flip side, he just, he knows what the fuck they're trying to do. And so he, he knows he could just ride along with it. So this is some really deep shit we're dealing with um, in terms of the depth of the depravity, but it isn't that hard to see how, the machinations of the current Republican leadership and the Santos fraud are like two peas in a pod, you know, uh, bound together and, and, and formed in the, in the same womb of fucking, fucking fragility and corruption. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, fucking inextricably linked and meant to be together. They're perfect for each other. Uh, it's fucked up. Your statement that we are united in New York, that we need to get rid of him, and we're gonna be relying on our New York representatives in both, both sides, uh, in, in both Republican and, and Democrat, to work with their fellow members of Congress to convince them that enough is enough. This, this is lowering the bar. This is unacceptable. This is un-American, this, 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 this squatter who's sitting in our 
seat at the House of Representatives. Yeah, holy shit, uh, holy shit, well, you're correct. Like the Dems, that's always been my problem with the Dems, man. They're not really the, they're not willing to play dirty when we all know this is a dirty game. Um, and I think potentially that's because a lot of them can't really push these issues of accountability, ethics, financial crimes too hard because they don't want people overturning the stones around their pond either. One of the things that we want to know, the citizens want to know, did George Santos fund his campaign from a Ponzi scheme that defrauded investors of $1.7 million? We know he's a liar. Is he a cheater also? It looks like he is. We need a free and fair election. Yesterday's news was all about how angry we are. Many of you covered that. We need you to cover this. We need you to tell our, or everybody that we need to have a united district. We need Republicans. We need Democrats. We need I'll our local you, elected officials to get together and, and join hands and call for his uh, his expulsion from Congress. We need our, our members of Congress from the entire state to do that. So we very much hope that you'll cover this. And with that, I'm going to turn it over. We have um, the, the citizens, the Concerned Citizens of New York 03 um, is an organization that um, brings together residents from across the district. And we have a steering committee from around the district who is guiding what we're doing and the, the strategies and the carrying out of the strategies. And one of our superstars is Aiden Davis from Plainview. Aiden, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'll hold you a sign oh, for you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Aiden Davis, A-I-D-A-N-D-A-V-I-S. I'm, I'm feeling from... the vibes, man. You know, I sat on steering committees in the city of Newark. The one I was most proud of was sitting on a steering committee for the police department. Uh, Y'all know my history, marijuana organizer, church community organizer, like, you know, part of the book administration's prosecutor office. I had all the perspectives at that table. Um, and it was just great to give voice to what we felt could could be steps forward. Um, talking about teachable moments, community policing, really, really being at the table, literally with the chief of police down there and just other community leaders gathered around like, yo, let's 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 really talk about how to really, really do this shit for real. And um just the 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 fact that people try to find young people with energy. I'm feeling I'm feeling my age, y'all. I'm feeling my age. I'm I'm 35. I'm looking at this nigga here like, yo, that's the young buck right here. But uh yeah, I'm just feeling positive vibes. It's good to see um young people uh carrying the torch, especially when something like this happens in your community, right? Because this is him stepping aside from whatever long-term interests he has in his community, right? So he's probably active, doing whatever, got his little career going and shit. But then when the George Santos shit happens, you know what I'm saying, you got to kind of step up right now. Uh, and so I'm sure just in the last few weeks, his whole life, like like most of the people up here, has been turned down, it, but has been turned upside down. But yeah, it's, it's really encouraging to see people out here and, and giving the damn steering committee some goddamn love. I love it. Plain view? Oh, look at that. It's so funny. Yeah, take, um, take a minute. Right. Uh, so I'm a member of Concerned Citizens of New York for 3. Trump? Oh my As Jody God. said, uh, we are a nonpartisan ad hoc group with the goal of getting George Santos out and getting a free and fair special election. Um, <laughs> right now, George Santos is has been, he is and has been derelict in his duty to the citizens of, of New York 3 and the people that voted for him. Uh, obviously, he hasn't opened a district office, which provides valuable constituent services Man, uh, to this is not even on uh, the New York job. 3. And the fact that we were directed by the Nassau GOP to go to Congressman Desposito's office for any constituent services that we need shows that we aren't being represented wow. in Congress. Uh, and that, that's a disgrace. Obviously, George Santos is a, a stain, as, as was described by the Nassau Republicans, on New York 3 and our district. Uh, and so, and the country. 
Uh, and so we need to be organizing, and we are organizing, to get him out. Um, Concerned Citizens in New York 3 is on social media. Our twi Twitter handle is ccny03. We're on Instagram, Concerned Citizens of New York 3. And we have a Facebook page for residents of New York 3, uh, of, New of New York 03. Uh, I believe it's just called Concerned Citizens of New York 03 on Facebook. Um, I, I, I have uh, slips of paper with the information if anybody needs uh, and wants to reference it later. We've been putting out press releases. We've been organizing uh, to get George Santos out that boy and give in this work. congressional seat back to the people. But so, in it work. Let's go. Thank you, Aiden and Jody. Uh, next, we have Jonathan Rudis, who is a uh, from Delphi Real Estate Advisors and is a leader in the senior citizen community in Woodbury. So R U D E S is in Sam, Jonathan, J O N. We have a powerful -A kingdom. Intergenerational. I'm a now uh, my Long old head stepping up. Let's also, go. Uh, an advocate for the senior community in, uh, right, in Long Island. And clearly, we have issues. We have economic issues. We have social issues. We need somebody to represent us uh, fairly in Congress. And clearly, um, George Santos isn't going to be able to do it for us, right? I think if the uh, Republicans feel that they want to keep Santos there, uh, keep another uh, liar, con man, weirdo, wacko in the uh, Congress, then they should probably make him their uh, poster boy. But uh, frankly, he's not helping Long Island. So uh, impeach him, we'll make him the poster boy. <laughs> Thank you. As an East Coast nigga, can I just say I love the the New Yorkness of everybody's presentation. Everybody is so New York, and it is kind of like like if this happened in fucking you know one of them D.C. districts or slick talking ass districts, you know you'd have a whole different. If this happened somewhere in fucking Massachusetts or some bullshit like that, nah, this shit happened in Long Island. All right, you didn't pissed over some Long Islander shit. This shit sound like halfway like it's the Sopranos or some shit, right? Like you're like they like yo they gotta it, it sucks because these are Long Islanders like they gotta try to do this shit the democratic way. They try to they try to look they got the smiles on because they trying to handle this shit democratically, right? But they really they really and listen, really I'm sick of it. Yeah, I'm taking the gloves yeah, off. Yeah, we taking the gloves. They really really just want to do some New York shit. They really want to just they really just want to corner Santos on some straight Long Islander shit and be like, nigga, you done fucked up in the wrong district. Yeah, you ain't getting in this office today. Yeah, you yeah yeah you ain't get yeah you ain't you don't, you don't serve here no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As of today, yo, yo contract with the district uh zero three here in New York, that shit has been terminated. Yeah, yeah. Not a people have spoken. Not a motherfucking people have spoken. So I'm proud of these New Yorkers. I can tell they're really exercising some restraint. Like they're really trying to do their civic duty here and handle this the right way. But you can tell. You can tell these some Long Island does they piss and they like I wish a nigga would I wish a nigga nigga come across that Nassau Bridge nigga come across what Thank you. He's fucking with some uh, well, New Yorkers from, right uh, here. Another baby. leader uh, in in the community, uh, Sheila Harmon uh, from from uh, the North Shore Towers community. Oh Hello. yeah, it's Harmon H A R. -M -M. Yeah. The old ladies in New York ain't fucking uh, around. Come on, baby. As a citizen, I've been around for a long time and worked on political campaigns for the last 50 years. I have never seen anything like this, and I've worked with both Republicans and Democrats. This is just horrible Not behavior <laughs> that no congressman or politician should model for the community. He's not there for us. And we need somebody. Um, I worked in a Central American country for six years. And uh, this is the kind of government in, that has uh, been produced from Central America, unfortunately. And we should not lower ourselves to that level. And he should resign immediately. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you. Well said. Uh, we'll now hear from a youth leader, uh, high school civic activist, uh, and an amazing young woman, uh, Marion Carp. 
Hello, my name is Marion. Uh oh, Karp. they said the child shall leave. Um, I O N K A R P, and I'm um, Marinick High School, and I am 17 years old, and I am here today to stand up for my community and represent the opinions of so many constituents who are frustrated and tired of the lies we have heard, and we are demanding justice in our community. We are standing behind an empty storefront and we are not being represented and our views are not being accounted for in Congress, which is a tragedy and a contradic contradiction to the values of our democracy. And I'm 17 years old. I should be in school, but I'm here because of the lies of Santos and we have to stand up to that and we have to act. And I urge the constituents to stand up and use their power of speech and utilize the social media campaign we are launching to voice their cries and make it known that we will not stand for this. The youth is rising up. We're all rising up in unity as a district and as a community. No matter your party and no matter your beliefs, we all know that this will not stand and we will not accept it. So we're here and we're organizing and we're mobilizing to make our views clear and to demand justice for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all, this is so well organized. Like. I don't know who organized this. I think it may be uh, this gentleman's, uh, the, the lawyer's kind of organization or whatever. But, man, these people are doing the top-notch shit. And I can tell you, I've been in these rooms where this shit happens. And a lot of y'all would really love it. Like, you would love it in the same sense of, you know, seeing what goes into a stream behind the scenes or seeing what goes into a service uh, behind the scenes or a concert, Right. This is very much like a concert. And so what happens is you're sitting around in a room in an office, you know, usually some fucking, some boardroom in, in some small legal office or nonprofits office, office space. And you're literally sitting around the table. You're coming up with the messaging points of this campaign. You're figuring out who all the key stakeholders are. Uh, and how you get in touch with them. So, like, you probably got to call one of these schools. You got to be like, all right, what's the local high schools? And then you got to get in touch with the school. Like, do y'all have, you know, a student that would be, you know, a really good public speaker on this? And um, and then you've got to, you know, reach out to the different organizations, get them represented. Um, you call most of these local media organizations. So some of them will come off of, um, press releases or they, they'll get wind of it, but mostly you're, you're calling these. I mean, when you're in these houses, you're literally, you're literally going over, like, who's our list of people? And then you're literally reaching out to their desk. Like, they have particular writers who covering, say, local politics is their beat. Um, and, and you're reaching out to those people. Like, they've mentioned the press releases a couple times. You write them fucking press releases. You know, that was one of the really great lessons in civics and activism I got early on was sitting around rooms, working on press releases and then seeing the press releases in the paper. You realize that it's work behind them stories and it's, it's not just like, oh, this reporter magically found this story. It's like, no, we sent them that story, you know, and they edited it a little bit and then they published that shit because, you know, it was our job to craft the, the narrative and the story and, and, and let people know what's going on. Um, and, and then you're reaching out to your rebel rousers, you know, who are our people? Like I know it's a lady uh, named Donna Jackson in, in New Jersey. Right? Anytime we really, shit really got to hit the fan. We really got to put our foot all the way up somebody's ass. You call Donna Jackson, baby. You get Donna Jackson on the job because Donna Jackson's going to pull up outside of City Hall with the motherfucking megaphone, and she ain't letting nobody have a peaceful day at work. <laughs> uh, so you just, you just have to literally have your ears to the ground and know who these people are and know what the fuck is going on. And then you have to put it all together in terms of the scheduling, the staging, uh, you know, the, the play here of figuring out, okay, this motherfucker hasn't even set up his office. You know, he hasn't even set up his local office. You know, it still has the prior, the previous 
uh, Congress person's names and shit all over it, which sometimes it can be standard fare because sometimes it takes a little while to get that shit changed over. But usually that's just taken care of right away. Um, and uh, they basically seized that. They capitalized on that. Uh, and, and, and then it's a beautiful visual, them outside his empty office. <laughs> <laughs> with with the with the prior congressman's name on the shit, right? And then they've got this beautiful intergenerational diverse fucking collective of all these interests calling his ass out and they've got the 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 names on the statements of all the other leaders who have signed on and they they have a way of calling out the ones who have like this shit y'all, I'm telling y'all, yo, they they pulled this shit off. This is this this they, they put in work and they pulled this shit off. Well said, and you see why she's a superstar. And uh, her mom is here, so we signed her out for a couple periods. Um, two, two last speakers we have. Uh, one is Vicky Cosgrove, uh, who lives recently in Queens, and uh, she's brought a special guest with her. Hi, my name is Vicky Cosgrove. That's C I C K Y. C O S G R O V E. Catch me if I you may, can. I get am it. An Vicky Vaughn Visual. I'm a city citizen. I am furious about this man. I had a great grandfather who was in the Civil War. He was a volunteer. He wasn't a coward. And this man comes to my community and thinks he's going to represent me. I, I'm so disgusted. I, I made this poster. I used to be a kindergarten teacher. I made this poster. This is him lying and running from his <laughs> constituents. He says that he's not going to listen to the congressman telling him. I don't listen to politicians telling me to leave. He said, I'll listen to my 142 uh, constituents that voted for me. Well, he's not counting the people like me who did not vote for him. And now all the people who did vote for him that no longer want him as their representative. So I would like to see him running with his pants on fire and out of, <laughs> out of this country even. Maybe they should prosecute him in Brazil for the checks that he stole and the money uh -oh. that he was using. Oh, that was she going his. in. And this is what I have to say. Lock him up. Thank you, Vicky. Thank Lock you. him up. Yeah. Export his ass. Thank you for your, your special guest as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> last, lastly is a concerned resident from the 3rd District, Aileen Abramson. Hello. Um, unlike a lot of these people, I've never done this before, so it's a little overwhelming for me. I was asked what I would, might want to say, and there's so many messages going through my head at the same time. It's hard to really narrow it down, but I did just hear Hakeem Jeffries um, in some interview say something to the effect of how the Republicans are now in the House of Representatives. They're running the House, and it's time for them to clean house. I thought that was well said, and the first order of business is to Good throw to see him everybody out. Here. When you think about Appreciate cleaning house guys. and throwing out, maybe they should start with George Santos. And I guess that's the main message, and obviously we'd like him to resign, and if he's not going to resign, I would love for him to find someone else who does represent us, because the best way he could represent us is by finding someone else to represent us. That's honest. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, so you've sweet. heard from a number of concerned residents. Uh, these are Republicans and Democrats, concerned citizens, Americans of good conscience, who are outraged that our congressman is a liar and a fraud and seems to have no shame. Right? The moral depravity to lie in the fashion that he did, to lie about his grandparents being involved in the Holocaust, to lie about his employees dying in the Pulse nightclub shooting. Yes, to lie him about down. literally him down. every single line on his resume. Run him down. Uh, it is an abomination and it's outrageous. And George Santos has said that he will not resign. He said he's only guilty of embellishing his resume. And so George Santos thinks the next two years he'll simply be able to weather the storm. He thinks he will simply be able to hide from the press to not show up for the voters who elected him, and he thinks that this will just die down. We are here to remind George Santos that we are not going anywhere, that the citizens in this district will not be silent, will not just accept this. We will rise up, and we will hold him accountable every single day. 
George Santos, if you are watching, when you come home to this district next week, even though you won't come to us, we will come to you. And so again, we are encouraging everyone in this district who is outraged like we are. When you see George Santos, post a picture of him with the hashtag, where's George? If George- I Sa gotta be honest with y'all. If I'm George Santos, my ass is not going home for this week of vacation. Matter of fact, if I was George Santos, I really wouldn't live in this district in New York, or I would no longer reside in this district in New York. My ass would be staying in Washington in my new apartment. I will be at my in-law's place for the week. I will be at my mama's house. I will be <laughs> vacationing in Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I were him, I would not be going home at all. What? What? Let me just put it to you this way, y'all. I'm going to just put it to you like this. That nigga is not trying to see LaGuardia. You understand what I'm saying to you? It's two airports in New York, JFK and LaGuardia. And that nigga is not trying to see neither one. Trust me, you don't want it in the airport, boy. Santos won't come to the voters who elected him then the voters in this district will come to George Santos and we will make every single day a living nightmare until he does the right thing and resigns. Uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Josh, oh, oh. Uh, you've been doing this for several years. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. I think, I think it is, right? I, so we started the day after the New York Times story dropped and we stood outside George Santos's house and I was the first elected official to call for his resignation. Day after day, we're building coalitions, right? Ad hoc groups have formed. Republicans have been called out to speak out about this. Uh, everyday citizens are being educated about what he's done. So we are making progress. The fact that a couple of weeks ago, we would know today that Republican members of Congress would call on him to resign, it was unthinkable, right? People of their own party are, are slow and they have trepidation to turn against one of their own. We are making progress here. The only hurdle that we have to go is making George Santos decide to do the right thing, right? We know that as a person, he's one of the most dishonorable people to ever serve in public office, I think, to let alone walk this earth. And so if he won't do it out of goodwill and conscience, he will have to do it out of the pressure and fear. Because every single day when you wake up and you're George Santos, and you come in this district, and you have people posting your picture, and you have people calling you a liar, and you have people calling on you to resign, and you have media cameras shoved in your face, at some point, it's just not worth it. Thank you. Shouldn't we also ask why, George? Why did he do this? Did he put a on his real resume? Or is some, something bigger fabricating all that for him? We, sh we should ask why, George. And, and when, I, when yeah, you say why, George, question. my question is why run? Right, when you run for public office, and I've been in elected office for 10 years, you have a why. A why. Some people want to make a difference on a specific issue. Some want to get involved in their community. Some believe that government is broken and they want to bring people together. Why George Santos ran, it's clear that he ran it's simply really to question. become famous and he got his wish. Except I think he's infamous. Any of the folks here vote for Santos and now Sure. So we've been asked this question. Um, anyone's welcome to speak up. We have Republicans and Democrats here who've joined us. Uh, if anyone wants to speak, but I, uh, I don't believe... Uh, anyone's voted for George here. I, mm? and just as a follow-up, I believe you were saying that the, the three Republicans who hadn't signed the paper, but they did publicly go in front of the cameras and call for Santos to resign. Right. But and we applaud that. It's a wonderful thing they did it, but it's half the step. And it doesn't, and it's great because it'll add pressure for him to resign. Right. But he's already, while they were doing their press conference, George Santos said he wasn't going to resign. We can't live with this man in, in our, in, as our representative for two years. There's one other path, and that is to get Congress to expel. And they have refused so far to sign off on that. And that's why we're saying it's mm. lip service, mm. unless they, unless oh, they she's sign. On. We, we really want to work with them. We want their help. We need their help. We need their help with our state representatives with our, that are from that are Republican. We need help with the members of Congress that are Republican. So we need a united, we need, we need a united, a united district.
The Constitution, I don't know, if, I, didn't, I didn't go to law school, but I'll just, I'll answer it quickly, that's why I didn't go to law school, so, but I did speak to a very, very well-known lawyer, uh, just as recently as this morning, to make sure that an ethics investigation is not required. The Constitution allows the House to make the decision based on whatever the House wants to make its decision. Oh, wow. And I can, I'll, right. Yeah, He's watching this and on his cell phone from inside a right. costume Carolyn, I can, I can answer that. So in terms of the legal grounds to expel George Santos, as Jody said, there, there doesn't need to be. But there is significant potential criminal activity that he engaged in. And if you remember, we stood outside the federal courthouse in Islip calling for an investigation by the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District. In terms of the potential crimes he committed, first of all, we know he may have committed voter fraud yep. by registering at an address in which he did not live because we stood outside that white stone address that he listed and the landlord had never heard of him. We know there's a potential conspiracy wow. to defraud the United States in regards to... Did y'all hear that? The landlord never heard of him? Uh, wow. ...nations from Russian oligarchs. We know that there is significant potential wow. for campaign finance violation. George Santos loaned yep. his campaign $700,000 in 2022. Yet when he ran for Congress in 2020, he listed that he made $55,000. George Santos didn't strike it rich and become rich overnight. Somebody gave him that $700,000, and that's what's called a straw man donation. It is illegal, and that punishment alone is worthy of jail time. Uh, and we know, as the New York Times just reported, Redstone Strategies was a group that convened to raise money for George Santos's campaign. We know they approached several wealthy donors who donated tens of thousands of dollars, yet there was not one ad that was reported from that group. And so we believe that was a potential conspiracy to raise money under false pretenses, wow. which is a violation of campaign finance laws as well. So, I, so just, yep. I, I just want to add, New York 03 voters aren't stupid. We know, we, know, yeah, we know when folks are um, trying to delay, we've been living with it for a long time and, uh, and, and well, we're not going to go there. But what we're looking for, we know that this does not require, con congressional action does not require an ethics investigation, although we certainly support an ethics investigation. We'd like that to continue while he's out of office and hopefully in prison. It does not require a criminal indictment or a conviction. We know that. He's a stain on this district, he's a stain on the country, and we need Congress to act, and that's what we're, gonna, that's what we're pushing for. Well said. Uh, any, any other questions? Yeah, sure. Well, we probably could walk around and get 142,000 signatures. I'm sure that there's 142,000 people on Long Island who's heard about this and willing to uh, Damn. Just to sign up. Damn! But, frankly, I think George Santos' only hope is uh, that we're gonna that this is gonna die down. Uh, I want to tell George Santos, this is not dying down, right? We're going to keep up the pressure. And if we have to get 142,000 signatures, we're ready to go do it. I, right. can I, I'd like to add to that. I'd like to add to that, too. So here's my reaction. I have, two, I have actually four reactions. One is, why should we believe him? He's lied about everything. Wow. He sends us out to go go the, wow. the broomstick of the Wicked Witch of the West, and we're going to come back, and then we're going to ask him to resign? I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I don't believe it. And my second reaction is, how dare he? How dare he put the, put the burden on the people that that's he lied right. to? That's that is absolutely that's unacceptable. That's absolutely right. We have a lame duck as our representative Whew. before he even starts. Whew. We need to get rid of him. Thank you. Well said. Oh. I was actually hoping someone would ask about the 142,000 votes, so thank you for asking that. My, I've been waiting, the answer to that question in my mind is he's lied about everything else. Why should we assume that his statement that he'll resign when he gets that number of votes, why should anybody put any stock in that? Yep. It's great There's nothing for to say because yep. he's just he's lying about everything else, so he's lying about that too. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah.
Thank you. Oh, just lastly, sorry, John's wife, Shelly, wanted to say something. Sorry. My name's Shelly Rudis, R-U-D-E-S. The only comment I really have is, as, a Rep as Republicans, they should be ashamed of themselves that he is what's representing them. Ooh. And if any of you are Republicans, this garbage reflects the whole Republican Party. Any last questions or? All right, sure thank you, everyone. Does. Thank you. All right, man, that was a hot, that was a hot one. That was a hot one, y'all. It ain't it ain't every day that a, that that a, a, a kind of district dispute really makes for a hot press conference. But that shit was fire. They 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 was they was about that life. Um. Now, yeah, uh, and, and, and just to reinforce what they were saying, I, I really do agree with them, 100%. Two paths. You turn up the pressure, you get this motherfucker to quit. He should have already quit. You can't operate as though he's going to quit down the road. You now have to operate strongly under the assumption he won't quit. So you keep up the pressure every day, letting him know he absolutely has to, but in the meantime, you shift the pressure to get rid of this motherfucker. And there really is no need to wait for an ethics investigation and blah, 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 because he's already admitted to lying about these things. We already know he lied. So there's really no need for the excuses. It just points out that the current Republican Party has no backbone, and you probably already knew that. Now... Um, let's quickly talk about old ass men going to jail. So an executive who worked for former President Trump heading to jail, Trump org CFO Alan Weiselberg sentenced to five months behind bars for helping put together a 15 year tax fraud scheme at Trump's real estate company. He admitted that from 2005 to 2017, he and other executives received bonuses that saved the company and themselves money. As part of a plea agreement, he paid nearly two million dollars in taxes, penalties and interest. The Have you ever thought right, now? Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. I heard Michael Cohen the other day basically try to make the argument that sending this really old man to Rikers was, you know, really rough for him because of his advanced age. Uh, no. Again, the nigga is the CFO of the Trump organization. So he was strong enough to be out here running the Trump organization. To me, giving him five months is a slap on the wrist. I don't know what his fines are, but to me, like... You know, he, he could easily pay that $2 million, walk out of prison six months from now, and have the Trump organization just rehire him with a perfectly legal $2 million signing bonus, $3 million signing bonus. And like, uh, welcome back to the Trump organization. We missed you. Where have you been? <laughs> like, it, it feels like punishments have to take a person's circumstances into consideration and I, I guess I don't know what the other options were or what the max is but it just literally feels like a slap on a wrist bad boy don't do that you, I mean you're talking about the CFO of the Trump organization like I said like to me the other problem here is you you we got to be stepping up this pressure so that people know when we come for you you got to flip on Trump now maybe we'll figure out down the road he flipped Trump hard now that would be amazing Matter of fact, let me let me let me put that out there as a little bit of a hashtag reserved optimism. You know, hopefully what that means down the road is he really gave up some goods on Trump. And that's why he got a sweetheart deal. But the current narrative is like people thinking he got this sentence because he wouldn't flip on Trump. 
And now this is supposed to be the harsh sentence for him having, you know, fallen on the sword for old Donnie JJ. I would think that that is not adequate given the, you know, what we're really talking about here. But again, it could be one of them things where y'all know the system is set up to make it easy for the rich guys to get away with shit. So it, it could be sort of, you know, he's guilty on very narrowly prescribed crimes that don't offer the opportunity for more serious sentencing, um, you know, because he's essentially been convicted of, you know, receiving some illicit benefits, maybe, you know, overseeing some shady accounting. Um, and those seem to be the type of crimes that um, our country does not yet take even as seriously of, as, as lifestyle crimes like drug dealing, right? Like, it, to me, this is not even... <laughs> so I think that's, that shows you right there um, where there's an imbalance in the system. All right, gang, uh, I went ahead into our main story for today, which is about, um, you know, sort of the avoidance um, of conservative and religious um, family members, um, especially as it relates to the holiday. A lot of y'all know that was kind of a big deal for me this year, staying home, um, spending the holidays in gather with the gang, with the community, with you guys, as opposed to trying to go home. So, uh, of course, uh, our main man, uh, James Apperson, uh, Got to thank James for sharing the story with me. Uh, maybe he'll pop in and, and uh, wax on this a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a really quick break uh, just to freshen up a bit. And I will be right back. And when I come back, we are going to get right into our main story of the day. Appreciate you, gang, and sit tight. In the afternoon I lay with her In the evening I'ma stay with her Hi, I'm in love I ain't even tripping But them say she a drug Cause she hear every day for me In the morning hit her faithfully At least the dub when we touch No one falling in love I ain't even tripping Cause she the one I could trust Even bring her out on dates with me See my mama new place with me She hold me down on the day I ain't even trippin' cause she with me in the clutch I go all out the way for ya Take some time out my day for ya I even took her on a plane But she ain't even a drug Some say I'm trippin' but they ain't even in love In the morning I might lay with ya In the afternoon I play with ya But I know I'm never trippin' The signs say I'm in love Mary Jane is different cause she ain't even a drug She be there she my sweet Mary Jane shorty I even took her on a plane but never enough Some say I'm tripping, she turned me into the plug She be there dealing way with me She be there to take the pain from me The homie said that I'm tripping but all they do is get drunk Smoking on the wax, they thinking I'm off the drugs I go all out the way for ya In the morning I might lay with ya Kids out to play with me They say I'm tripping, I ain't slipping Cause she ain't even a drug Niggas sipping lean and worry what's in your cup In the morning I might play with ya Take a long walk and stay with ya She my sweet Mary Jane And she the one I could trust Niggas sipping lean But me I'm smoking a dub I go all out the way 
way for ya Take some time out my day for ya I even took her on a plane, but never enough Some say I'm tripping, but they ain't even in love In the morning I might lay with ya In the afternoon I play with ya But I know I'm never tripping, cause hi I'm in love Mary Jane is different, cause she ain't even a drug Yeah All right, gang, welcome back. Um, thanks for staying with us. And uh, yeah, would love to hear uh, your thoughts in the chat on this topic. Um, now, it, it, it at first, um, you know, I, I was definitely 100% interested in discussing this. Uh, but at first, I was kind of like, damn, we're kind of right after the holiday season. So... I was like, that's kind of weird. But now that I think about it, I, I actually think it's super useful, right? So here's how we're going to do this. It's like, for me, I'm definitely going to be reflecting on my thoughts about sort of what it was like to sort of avoid, you know, family gatherings this year. You know, like I said, I stayed home. Uh, we did Friendsgiving and in, in Gather. We did happy, Merry Atheismus and Gather or whatever. Uh, all the holidays. New Year's we did in Gather. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be kind of talking about that perspective uh, because this was the first year that that was uh, something I was really struggling with, and, and I talked a lot about it. So, um, But also... I would like maybe those who did spend the holidays with um, family or, or loved ones, um, and, and maybe you can reflect on if you can relate to what uh, either I'm, my commentary or, or what um, our presenter here is going to be talking about the channel here is Friendly Atheist. Uh, I actually um, have not seen a lot of their stuff. I think I've heard the name before or whatever, but I haven't really seen a lot of their stuff. I literally just uh, subscribed right now. Um, so, yeah, I want to I want to hear from you guys. Right. Like, I think it's actually useful since the holidays sort of just happened for people to reflect on you know, how they feel about it, right? Because it should be fresh in our memory. So maybe you guys relate, maybe you don't relate, we'll find out. Maybe you relate to my perspective, maybe you don't, but would definitely love to hear from you uh, on it. All right, here we go. Thought about just, have you ever thought about just not inviting your insane MAGA parents over for Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever else you celebrate, it turns out. All right, so the other thing I wanna do is I want us to reflect on this uh, a little bit broader. Um, so I guess he's talking in this video about conservatives in particular. And so I think that the conversation is going to lean heavy. I don't know. I haven't seen this, so I'm reacting as I go. But I think a lot of this conversation is going to lean heavy into, like, your right-wing radical MAGA red hat uncle, right? For me, that's not a realistic situation, right? There's just not a threat of that. I hate to break it to you guys, but I'm black and most of my family, normal black folk. And I'm not saying you can't be black and vote Republican, but I do think you'd have some splaining to do. And so my family just isn't filled with MAGA people. Nevertheless, compared to me as a progressive, as left leaning, as um an atheist, as you know, a scientist professionally, I consider my religious family members to be conservative relative to me. They feel very conservative. Like in the same way a lot of us would say, just because you vote blue, if you're on that Joe Biden tip, you know, 
that Raphael Warnock did, <laughs> we still probably consider you conservative, right? Because you still hold to traditional Christian cultural norms and values and traditions, right? And so I, I, I um, if you look at the question of the day, you know, I kind of broadened it a little bit to include, uh, I said, religious slash conservative um, family members. And I just want people to reflect on that, that, you know, I know for some people, when I say conservative or religious family members, they don't have to be MAGA hats. Um, they just have to be conservative or traditional, you know, relative to you and your beliefs. And I think that's enough to uh, have a relevant perspective here. A lot of people have decided the answer is no, and conservatives can't handle hey, it. Hey, In an essay that inspired unintentional laughter all over social media, right-wing commentator Dennis Prager was deeply concerned that so many conservatives are no longer welcome in their kids' homes because of their politics. He said an unprecedented number of Americans with grown children will be alone this Christmas because their own kids don't want them around. Parent after parent calls my radio show often close to tears, sometimes actually sobbing, pouring their heart out to me about being alone on holidays despite having children and grandchildren. You don't need to All right, so I really like Randy's perspective here. Withholding your time is the only leverage you have with family, especially if it would be a bunch of arguing with mom and grandparents. Uh, a bunch of fighting leads uh, to people saying things they wish they hadn't. Yes, I agree with that. And for me, it also allowed space to say things I wish I had said, <laughs> right? And I think that that's kind of where a lot of people feel stuck. It's like, if, if I go, there's going to end up being a lot of things said that people may regret saying. And I don't know if they regret saying it, because clearly, if they didn't mean it, it probably wouldn't come out. But they kind of probably regret you know, the situation, like how awkward it was or the timing. And and then it's really tough because I feel like you don't have regular relationships with these people, right? So a lot of times you don't you don't have other opportunities to see them. So these differences come out at Christmas time because there really isn't any other time for them to come out. So yeah, often you are just gonna avoid to read any further to guess why this is happening. If you care about LGBTQ people civil rights, reproductive rights, public schools, having mature adults in government who want to get things done, or you're someone Chinese personally violin, affected am. by those battles, you know damn well <laughs> that the Republican Party and conservatives, by and large, oppose all of that. They oppose civil rights. They oppose educating people about the history of achieving civil rights. And they see Congress as a place to air their grievances, not get things done for people who rely on government services. I intend to speak in support of defunding Obamacare. Most Americans could not give a flying <laughs> about a bunch of politicians in Washington. Who cares? On a Saturday or Sunday morning when your dad's making pancakes, it is very cool when he can like flip them and make them, you know, make them do a flip high in the air and catch them. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you, Sam I am. I really do feel embarrassed by that. And it's not just elected officials who are the problem though they are part of the problem. The people who vote for them either share their views or don't care about any of it, or are willing to accept bigotry and stupidity in exchange for other policy positions or right-wing judges, which is hardly any better. If healthcare matters to you, for example, then people who reject vaccines and spread conspiracy theories about COVID, not to mention other diseases, are literally putting lives at risk. If people you know vote for people who spread those lies, they're part of the problem. And all of that is before we get into 
banning books, denying election results, whitewashing history, rejecting basic science, demanding more guns in more hands in more places, and believing what now again, here's a little perspective, gang. Again, I don't have MAGA hats in my family, but part of the tension between me and my family is that even though they vote blue, they are conservative, they are traditional, they are about that religious life. So while they don't vote for these people, they nevertheless elevate and worship the Christian cult that is fundamentally at the core of a lot of the extremism we see in our country. Furthermore, they are guilty of many of the same offenses. They too have supported either explicitly or tacitly by accepting, you know, the, the, um, um, you know, disparaging treatment of LGBT fam fam, including people within my own family. So to me, our families never address that. There is this biblical authority that is expected to operate in the family, which does undermine the basic facts of science. Sorry. Um, so while I'm glad my grandparents and my mom aren't anti-vaxxers. They still are on the Jesus tip in a way that I find guilty of many of the same things, including whitewashing American history because they're, they have to whitewash the role of the church in slavery and in Jim Crow laws and in the oppression of black people so that they can pretend that the real Christian story is Jesus loves black people, brought them out of their exodus, and now they're, they've been freed from slavery because, G again, Jesus loves them and Jesus can convince those white people to let his people go. Uh, which is why so many of our fucking uh, people like, you know, my uncle, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather are all named fucking Moses. Whatever other lies Fox hosts shove into their heads. Here's the bottom line. These are not yep. differences of opinions that can be set aside or debated over an hour-long dinner. These are harmful beliefs that make worse the lives of you and the people you love. Your kids will suffer more because of decisions made by their conservative grandparents. Shared blood and genes don't make up for any of that. If Boom. you agree with me on those issues, why would you invite people with what you consider to be dangerous views into your home voluntarily. That's Thank especially you. true if you have kids. Parents wanna protect their children, and that may mean protecting them from their grandparents' cuckoo bananas beliefs. Now, let me say this. I know not everyone can say no to their parents, and I am not picking on you if you can't. But for people who have the choice, and take advantage of it, I totally get why they would want to keep this <laughs> inside their home. Yes, and so this is, you know, the same thing that is said about inviting these people into your home can be said about accepting their invitations into their homes, right? If it's just going to be a place you don't feel comfortable or you have to be around cuckoo beliefs and you just don't want to, why rob yourself of that peace? especially during the holiday time, which is supposed to be a time of vacation. The way I often describe it is, you know, it's like you have this vacation time. You go deal with your family during that vacation time because you feel socially obligated to. And then when you're done, it's taken such a toll on you that you really need a vacation. Like, you, you really seriously need a vacation. Like, you, you, you just need some fucking downtime to, like, decompress the fact that this is your real life and this is these are really your relatives. Um, 
And yeah, not feeling obligated to do so, taking advantage of the fact that I didn't have to felt really great this year. Um, you know, I, I felt some stress during the break for other reasons, mostly issues to deal with studio stuff and, um, you know, repairs needing to get taken care of around the house and, in in a bit of a hiccup for a few days in um, my medications. So, uh, you know, just uh, some some things I would have rather not been dealing with in the sort of limited downtime I have between semesters. Um, But I can honestly say that removing family from the picture was very relieving this year. And that was actually the motivation for the decision. It, it, it was twofold. It was on one hand, uh, this was the first year I felt like this anxiety about going home for the holidays, like, like this, this anxiousness, this sort of, oh, I'm going to have to pretend to not be a boisterous, angry atheist for a few days, right? I'm going to have to you know, probably not talk about my atheism or not talk about evolution or not rant and rave about religious people the way I normally do. Um, And uh, I didn't like that. And I I had anxiety about little things like, you know, how is is my stream going to work, right? Uh, A lot of you guys haven't been watching me long enough to realize this, um, uh, mostly because I haven't been traveling since I've been, you know, really regular on YouTube, but streaming is a real passion of mine and, um, it has been for years now. Right. And so even before I started doing counter apologetics, when I was just like a casual Twitch streamer with a really small following on Twitch, um, mostly doing like gaming and some music production stuff and sharing some work and shit like that. I, always traveled with my stream and so even if I went to like my mom's place for the weekend the one time I really didn't was when I traveled with the last time I traveled with my girlfriend um I kind of gave myself but uh, but that's because I wasn't streaming at that time um I was you know kind of deadlocked into grad school and teaching and other stuff like that um but you know and my point is, uh, during times like this, when I'm actively streaming and I'm not taking a break from streaming, I always travel with my stream stuff, right? And that's meant that when I go visit my mom, I have my TV, I have my computers, I have, you know, my microphones, I have my cameras, I have my console, you know, there are times I've even traveled with like my wheel or, or some of my sound gear, right? Some of my, you know, my drum pad stuff, right? And so it's always been like, if I've got to go somewhere, um, the show has to come with me. And so I was feeling a bit of like, how the fuck am I going to do my counter apologetics show in a house full of Christians? And it wasn't even feeling like I couldn't do it. Like I knew I could go up into the room and say, hey, I've got to go do my YouTube show. And, and I could just do it and not say anything. It's not like my family is going to stop me or harass me about it. But again, it's kind of weird to be in a house with people and not talk about the show you're doing, right? <laughs> or not have, you know, just that casual conversation of like, hey, what was your show about today? How'd it go? What happened? Or whatever, right? And it's just all this weirdness. Or are they going to be kind of, listening to me you guys know there's times during the stream i get very animated uh, and it'd be hard to not hear what i'm saying um if you're in the same house as me right and so am i gonna go on some rant and rave about how much i hate some dumbass shit about religion and then have to go sit you know over a ham dinner with my fundamentalist Pentecostal grandparents who are actually ministering a church and we just can't get to retire for anything. Um, right. And so that was, that was one fold. Like I genuinely had anxiety about all that. Like, I don't want to deal with that. 
Um, and then at the same time, I've, you know, this has been such a crazy year of growth and progress with this community, with the stream, with the relationships I've built with all of you. And I was really just excited about the idea of like, damn, I've never really just done Friendsgiving or atheismus. I've done a couple things like uh, there was, you know, there was times I used to go to Thanksgiving with um, some coworkers, right? And whether I had a partner or not, I would bring them with me. Um, I remember one time, even I was in a poly relationship, uh, both my girlfriends were with me for Thanksgiving at Rich Lenski's house. It was one of the best holiday experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, but I never really, you know, done like we did this year, like link up with the gang, keep it virtual, hang out with the friends and, and just, just enjoy celebrating holiday with the people you celebrate your day-to-day -day life with and have special time with them rather than, you know, special time with people who quite frankly aren't a part of your everyday life. And that felt wonderful. So both of those things, um, and, and I was fortunate enough that we talked through my feelings about a lot of this um, beforehand as I was thinking about making that decision, once I finally made that decision, and, and on and on. But yeah, I was definitely feeling strongly both of those emotions pointing me towards not going home. And um, yeah, it was, I, was, I was really glad I made that choice. And at the same time, it gave me space to have some of those serious conversations with my family. And I think that that may be a sort of hidden bonus here, because I think what happens is your absence, um, like we're talking about, that may be the only way you just leverage your, your independence to maintain your peace and enjoy your holidays, right? But at the same time, it might also be a tremendous catalyst for these broader conversations with family and friends that you have these serious disagreements with because now they feel your absence. They, they wonder why they weren't invited over this year or they wonder why you didn't come over this year. Um, it doesn't have to be something you talk about right away. You don't have to say, hey, I'm not coming home for Thanksgiving because you guys suck. Now suck on that turkey and have your fucking fun with Jesus. Click, right? Um, but if those conversations do come up, that is a great opportunity to say, well, hey, if you really want to know, uh, I'm glad you asked. I, I know it's uh, you're used to us being around on the holidays, and so I, I totally understand why you would want to inquire about that. And the truth is, you know, I, I'm, I'm a person who feels pretty strongly about X, Y, and Z. And, um, you know, I, I really do have a hard time um, holding my peace and, and holding my tongue when I'm around people who, who, you know, really have strong disagreements about those things. You're basically confessing that you're a you know, you're a swipe left if you're a conservative or religious type of type of social dater, right? It's not, I shouldn't say that, but maybe your family and friends, right? Like you're, that's where you're, you're establishing. You're establishing, hey, I'm not one of those people who basically says you can be in my life even if we strongly disagree about certain things. Ah, we can chalk it up to a uh, different perspective and, and we can still, you know, uh, chow on turkey and cranberry sauce together. You're just identifying yourself as, hey, man, such and such is a super important issue to me. I really can't look the other way on that. And, um, you know, I, 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 I would welcome some more dialogue about those issues so that hopefully we can come to a, an understanding um, and influence one another in a way that allows us to move forward in our relationship. Now, you got to be ready, willing, and able to deal with the fact that that might not happen. They might not be willing to have those conversations, or they might be happy to have those conversations, and those conversations don't go as well as you think they would. Um, and you got to kind of be okay with that, too. Um, number one, that may actually 
allow you to just say, boom, I've been heard. I, I took the opportunity to kind of have it out with this person. I see we're not going to be able to bridge that particular difference. And now we can both move forward understanding that, you know, we, we probably just won't see each other on holidays. And, you know, if if it comes to some other kind of way as family or friends that they need me or 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 there's something that, you know, I'm I'm obligated to give them with regards to say like care or support, you just say I'm I'm happy to do that, but you know, we're probably just not gonna kick it and watch football on on Christmas Day. Um but you also might find that that allows you to bridge the difference. Meaning with some of my family, I might not get them to leave their Christianity alone. I might not get them to deconvert. I might not get them off of some of the problematic ideas that they have. But I think I've made real progress in them understanding that I'm an atheist. I think there's been real progress in them understanding that I feel very strongly about these things. I think there's been an understanding about, you know, sort of putting away your religious toys when I'm around, not having the home super decorated with religious themes because those things do make me uncomfortable. So I do think, and 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 again, I have to tip my hat to my current understanding of my relatives and my family members and say that that's because they seem to be willing to meet me on some of those compromises. Not everybody's family is going to be like that. Um, but that's another benefit, I think, of staying away. You stay away. You let them do their thing. You do your thing. They do feel your absence. Them feeling your absence is the catalyst for the conversations, then you have the real conversations from a safe distance, not over the dinner table, not with the rest of the family around and it's holidays and, and now there's going to be bitterness for years because you ruined a hol family holiday, but you, you take your safe space and find your, your, your ways to have that email exchange or share some videos with them or talk to them on the phone about these things. Um, you know, virtual visit, whatever you want to do. Um, and then maybe you do really make some progress with them, or at least they come to understand why you're not going to be around. Or who knows, you get enough compromise that you can actually um, be there next time. Again. That just seems obvious to me. Yet Dennis Prager, always ready with a horrible take, offered several Thank other you, explanations for these rifts. Hey, happy smiles. Great he to claimed see you guys. that progressives were less likely to feel accountable to an absolute moral code including a god who dispenses that code. On the other hand, he argued, people like him believe in the Ten Commandments and the idea of honoring thy parents. Having a moral code. Also, John, I really appreciate your comment about uh, taking a recovery day. Um, I just want to speak to that real quickly. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of a monologue, I try to not interrupt my flow of thought, but um, sometimes you guys make really important comments that I want to get back to. Um, just so you guys know, I'm fine. Um, when I have frustrations with technical difficulties, it's mostly because I have a test channel and I'm a producer and my show is really high tech, as you guys know, unnecessarily high tech. Um, but it's just how I work and it's how I like things. <laughs> um, and so it just requires a lot of my gear. And I do a lot of testing to make sure everything works. And then when I have problems that I just can't control, it frustrates me um, because uh, one, quite frankly, I find that shit embarrassing, and, and most performers do, right? I've been performing my whole life. I'm obviously used to things going wrong. I've experienced all types of performance disasters, like literally drum sets 
shit falling over and losing my mind. Like I, I've, I've experienced just every disaster, bleeding all over the snare drum, just crazy shit. So it's not so much that I can't handle, you know, recovering a show from a, a glitch or a mistake or something like that, but it, it frustrates you when you put all that effort into making sure those things don't happen and then they happen anyway. Also, to be honest with you, as a bipolar person, I think that has a lot to do with it because it really causes a mood swing. So like today, for instance, I was up early. I wanted to do the show much earlier because I was up early. You know, if things had gone smoothly this morning, I probably would have done a show at noon, maybe, uh, maybe even a little before noon. Um, I think 1130 was the first time I'd really popped out in my head, but um, I had an issue with some frozen cameras and some weird USB issues. I had to troubleshoot that. Again, nothing, was, everything was the same as it was last night, but woke up this morning and one of the cameras is frozen and one wasn't showing up, so I had to deal with that. Um, once I got things restarted with that, the computer just blue screened. <laughs> it just blue screens it. So literally, I ended up starting the show an hour later. And that's that's considered, you know, not that bad, right? Sometimes the, those type of hiccups cost even more time, you know. But yesterday, we had issues in the middle of two shows. So my point is, though, when I'm in a good mood and, and I'm excited and I'm ready to go and that stuff happens, it puts you in a really bad mood. <laughs> like you're just in a bad mood, right? Um, and... Um, that's, that's another reason I've, I've tried to mostly get mods to know that if they check on me, um, like if they see a stream go down and they check on me, I try to let them know what's going on, um, if I can, but usually if I've got to fire the show back up, I don't even want to talk about it, right? Because I already know I'm in such a bad headspace that conversations with me are, are not going to be pleasant. And I always hate when people take that personally because I know they're just trying to help. <laughs> but it, it is. It's, it's like a, it's a thing you have to learn as a performer. You have to learn that shit happens, things go wrong, even between sound check and going live. And you really can't let that, you try not to let that affect your audience. You try to just flush it, forget it, put on a happy face and do the best show you can, um, but it's hard, right? And I think being bipolar, that makes it even harder to do that when something goes wrong. Um, so that's what I mean by frustration. And it is technical, right? The issue is I just need to replace these computers. Um, the show is very demanding on machines. The way I work is incredibly demanding on machines. And fortunately, um, my advisors and the people I work with have agreed to replace both of my, my machines, both the sh machine I actually do most of my work on and the machine I use for streaming and recording. Um, it's just we've been in a bit of a holding pattern for a bunch of university reasons I won't get into. Basically, just university paperwork makes everything take forever, and the machines are so expensive that we have to have all sorts of special approval to get them purchased, and then other special approvals to get me to have administrative control over them. So it's just taking forever. And so that's frustrating. You're just kind of stuck, like, uh, we know the solution. We already solved this problem, and the solutions are fucking amazing. It's just taking too long, you know? So it's, it's, it, it just bugs me. But it's really important because streamers have to take care of themselves. And um, I am well aware that people burn out, and I don't want you guys worried about me burning out. I'm not burnt out. <laughs> um, I, I really enjoy streaming every day, but I remind myself that I don't have to. I don't feel pressure to stream every day. I feel like I could take time off. I feel like I could take a week off or whatever if I needed to, and that everybody would be understanding. So, um, I've kind of been through that, right? Like I said, I started out on Twitch really small, but I streamed on Twitch for a long time. And I think there was a while, I wouldn't say I got burnt out, but I definitely 
stagnated because I was pushing myself really hard to stream and then um, pushing myself really hard in like grad school with work and stuff. And, you know, so I ended up taking time away from it. Um, and that ended up being good for me because it, it sort of helped me build back up my life in in a way that like wasn't so dependent on streaming um and it also made me not afraid to step away from it um especially because a lot of the friends and mods i had made i was like able to maintain relationships with and and people who i was and i just kind of understood that that's the way it goes sometimes so yeah i um appreciate the concern and definitely just wanted to be clear that you know I'm not burnt out right now, and uh, if I if I was, I would I would definitely take some time off. And uh, for those of you that may be out there listening, I know uh, some of the other content creators in our community watch the show, um, and unfortunately, I feel like a lot of my bad habits rub off on people streaming at crazy hours, streaming for crazy hours, streaming every day and shit like that. Um, I hope everybody's encouraged to take a break, take some time away from it. The community's here for you. We love you. We, we, and I agree. It's a really great way to put it. We'd rather you take some time off to recover than get burnt out and stop streaming or get burnt out and have, um, you know, negative consequences for your mental health or other areas of your life. We want streaming to be a mutually rewarding relationships where the content creators are feel like it's rewarding and the audience feels like it's rewarding um and and nobody feels obligated on on either end so really really appreciate those comments and the opportunity to talk about it because i think streamer burnout is a real issue especially for people who do it for a living where they feel like they have to stream um, they have to put out a certain amount of content. Um, their audience relies on that, and then their money gets funny, right? If they if they aren't putting stuff out, so definitely something we should be encouraging all of our uh, content creators to sort of have a healthy work life balance uh, with that in that regard. Is precisely why liberal adults may not want to see their conservative parents. We're the ones with values. They're the ones whose beliefs inspire and justify cruelty. If the only reason you want to honor thy parents is because an ancient list told you to, it means you wouldn't do it if you didn't have to. Dennis Prager seems to think obligation overrides decency. I have far more respect for people who thought about it and realized they were better off without all that bad energy in their lives, even if it was coming from within their family tree. This is not about political differences. Families are not breaking up because members have different ideas about taxes. This is about values and decency and the fact that one side revels in hurting others. If your parents are racist or sexist or homophobic or transphobic, you have every right to take a stand and break your ties with them. You don't have to let hate slide just because it's family. Your parents... And this is another issue that I think we have, especially as vocal atheists and people in the counter-apologetics community. Our atheism is really important to us. And for many like me, um, who might consider themselves secular or secular humanist or anything along those lines, um, you are really talking about differences in values. And I do feel that Christianity and most of these religions are in their way their own form of bigotry and hate. And they may try to whitewash that, but to me, these religions say awful things about heathens or non-believers, um, whether it's 
sort of the Hebrew, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, authentication of, um, you know, genocide and slavery, right? Because they're free to destroy the lands of the heathens and they're free to take their slaves and own their slaves forever when they're taken from amongst the heathens. I mean, there's this very clear way in which the whole, you know, Jewish sort of religion, all about making them God's chosen elect, and all of that shit to me really is problematic from the perspective of a non-believer um, in a way that, quite frankly, I feel like the you know, Jewish religion often gets a pass on um, to, you know, Islam's thou shalt not suffer a heathen to live or whatever. <laughs> um, and then all the, the fucked up things the Bible says, you know, from the John 3.16 being, being very clear that salvation is for those who believe in Jesus, which makes it very clear that salvation is not for those who don't. Um, and, you know, all of the ways that the Bible has clear messaging about avoiding heathens, um, you know, not following after them, not taking up their customs and their ways, um, you know, God sort of sorting, you know, his people from not his people, Jesus casting reprobates and whatever into the valley of Gehenna, all this shit. It's very clear that there is a doctrinal discrimination against non-believers. And so again, if we're honest with ourselves about that and then you reflect that like hey I don't want to be around family members who endorse that narrative I think I think we're in the same boat where you're good to go it's it's just totally understandable why you would want to not want to spend holidays sorry totally understandable why you would not want to spend holidays with people that make you feel like a second class citizen Parents have no legal right to have access to your kids. Dennis Prager refuses to acknowledge that right-wing cruelty is a deal breaker for many people. That is true with friendships, dating, and yes. Uh, the, uh, about when is the new computer gonna be done? The Mac is already ordered and shipped. Uh, my, my advisor has it. He just needs to send it to me from Minnesota. Um, I think he's just waiting to hopefully in the next couple of weeks get some uh, uh, the the administrative stuff cleared on it, and then the the other streaming PC. I approved an estimate for the machine I want, and so uh, the last I heard is they're just. Uh, need to finalize like what account they're going to pull the funds from um, and whether or not that needs to um, touch into some of the funds that are set aside for my research supplies. Obviously, we'd prefer them to not have to use those funds, but if they do, I'm fine with it. So I'm hoping to have both machines in the next few weeks. Um, really uh, when I have a, I'll have a meeting with my advisor on Monday and that'll be the number one topic of conversation but I'm really hoping that uh, in the next month or so I'll have both familial ties he claims his side would never no, do this the other, other way one. around no. which is not true but no they're pre-built they machines uh, one is the one is the new the iMac like the the what what, is the, what the fuck are they called the the studios it's like a iMac studio or whatever they're they're really sweet I don't I don't know they're like the real dope ass fucking Macs I don't this, why am I not. Yeah, the M1, sorry, the M1. It's an M1 Ultra, right? So uh, one of these crazy iMac uh, M1 Ultras. I don't know, they're, they're wild. Uh, M1 Ultra Studio, probably like one of these. Yeah, something like this.
uh, except with um, I wanted like 128 gigs of RAM or something like that. Like it's a so basically a super tricked out version of that. And then the other one is going to be I think a Dell like a Dell tower because the university has some special relationship with Dell. So um, we're hoping to get like a I don't know. It, the hard thing is like I wanted super tricked out specs for all for both these machines, right? So we had to get into that that's the that's the hold up is that both of these machines are super expensive. Probably about ten grand more or I think uh total with the two machines. So I'm I'm very appreciative that they're um supporting the purchases. We just uh anxious to get them. For things like stronger unions, universal health care, and a safer environment. Things that help a lot of people who don't have wealth or power. Even if you agree with certain positions, that is a far cry from a GOP platform that promotes conservative Christian bigotry specifically and aims to punish everyone who disagrees by depriving them of their rights. Dennis Prager also blames college for this supposed problem because, well, conservatives like him blame college for just about every cultural grievance they can imagine to the point where Prager created his own fake university with big quote fingers there to spread bad ideas with a veneer of respectability. And this is a tension that is not going away with regard to um, these sort of generational tensions that we find in our families. And I think the problem is, like many things that um, are almost like non-negotiable these days, Christians pay lip service to education, but they don't really want people to be educated. What they really want is people to go to school and make more money for the cult. So there's this way in which they want people to use being educated, right? They want you to go to school, become a doctor, become a lawyer, uh, become an engineer, become a businessman, whatever the fuck that means, um, politician, whatever you got to do. And then come back and praise God for your education and then give 10% of your really high salary to, to, to the church. And they, and they don't understand that if people actually go to school to become educated, then that very process of becoming educated is what will undermine um, the conservative and traditional narratives. I'm one of those people who thinks they're not wrong about these things. Of course, it's annoying when you have a Ben Shapiro get up there and throw liberal universities under the, under the bus and talk about the woke ivory towers and all of this shit. But the people who taught me at my universities and the people who I model my own educational philosophy after are incredibly proud of the liberalizing effect of education. Like, yeah, that's what we want our universities to be. Absolutely. <laughs> we want them to be places where people go to think for themselves to gain real expertise um, uh, at, with the world around them, where we train them to be um, difference makers and uh, people who add value to society. And yeah, that's going to reliably lead to them throwing away um, the sort of more superstitious pursuits in life. They're going to realize that that is not uh, where we get the most um, economy, right? That's not where we get the, the most efficient use 
of our greatest resource, which is uh, personnel. So I'm, I'm with it. Like, yes, it's just, it's, it's a shame that our families don't realize they're setting themselves up for this by telling everybody to stay in school and then being pissed at everyone when they stay in school, right? First, they say it's okay to punch Nazis. Then they say that every conservative, in fact, everybody they disagree with, is a Nazi. But here's the biggest problem with the left's argument. They're based on feelings, not facts. He refuses to accept that more in-depth education and exposure to a wider variety of people and go. the ability to explore new ideas away from the cultural or societal or religious barriers you grew up with might lead some students down a more progressive path. Conservatives thrive on the belief that they're always being persecuted and their values are always under attack no matter how much institutional power they actually have. Their solution is to reward the historical winners while creating more obstacles for everyone else. That might sound great inside a right-wing silo like PragerU, but it falls flat everywhere else. We know what a Prager-like mentality gets us. Failed governance, more people left behind, and larger inequalities. So no, we are not inviting religious bigots or mega cultists or red-pilled debate me addicts or non-sarcastic Dennis Prager readers to dinner over the holidays because we want to spend that time with people we actually love. There it not is. Not people we're traditionally obligated to be around. There if it is. old conservatives like Dennis Prager can't handle being alone over Christmas, then they should take a long, hard look at their misguided beliefs and figure out why they're so damn repellent. Not that's, blame that's everyone it. else for our refusal to embrace Ooh. their broken brains. If they want to be loved, they should try being more loving. If you want love, then the love has got to come wow. from you. Wow. The good news is that they have plenty of time over the holidays to rethink their life choices since they apparently have no dinners or parties to attend. So there's no better time to get started. There it is, folks. That was That's what I said, y'all. You just gotta, hey, now's a great time for you to think about this, you know? Um, oh, man. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, gotta, gotta save that. Uh, we're gonna save that to our apologetics list, man. And again, under ten minutes, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to start sharing these videos, um, maybe in like a Discord channel or something, because I think uh, these videos that are like under ten minutes, but so well done, I think are really great conversation starters with our own friends and family. Right? You don't want to send them, you know, some four hour lecture produce overproduced video like it's just going to be crazy um i appreciate all your love and support but they're probably not going to be too excited to tune into something like my stream either right to where um you know the, the streams just last forever and they're not really sure we have a powerful <laughs> cumulative you case know, what the hell's going on or why they should listen um, but you give them these things that are kind of under 10 minutes. They're really digestible. Um, they really go right for the heart of the issue. I think those are great conversation starters. Those are the type of thing that a person can, you know, keep a good hold of what they, what something makes them feel and, and how they would respond to what's being said. So. Uh, I think I'll find a way to share these in Discord. And uh, I do hope some of you will take up these challenges uh, to share these with some people. I'm going to try to share some of them with some believers on stream. There's some people I'm trying to get in touch with, but hopefully I'll start having more conversations this year with uh, um, believers who are, you know, still good faith actors who are you know, exploring rather than just some of these 
uh, apologists who have just doubled down and, and some of the crazy sycophants, you know, uh, we, we do a little of that too, but it, it gets frustrating and I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, but I'll still try. We, we, you know, like we shared a video with Lupin, like the top three reasons Christianity doesn't work. That was a uh, Neil's video. Uh, you know, it was interesting to hear his responses. Obviously, um, he's not moved by much, but I think that conversation would have gone a lot more productively with Kevin or a different type of believer who's really on this journey and willing to take in new information. So we'll see. Uh, appreciate you guys so much for watching. Really had a great time. Um, so glad you decided to spend part of your Friday with us. Uh, we are in the Bundy Ranch. Uh, come link up with the gang. Come hang out. Uh, I'm going to keep working on stuff behind the scenes. So uh, we'll have the entertainment on. I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll watch some uh, videos. And uh, later on, we'll watch some shows and movies. And, uh, you know, like I told you guys, we're, we're over. We're in Gather all the time. So we'll have a overnight movie playlist going. Uh, last night we had the had, had music videos going overnight because uh, Joel was streaming uh, Fargo. Uh, that show looks super cool. Um, watching some of that, and then I had the music videos going overnight. So uh, always trying to mix it up, and do some fun stuff. Uh, obviously, we've got lots of games and gather cards and dominoes and Uno and poker and we've got the pool tables so uh come link up with us at the bundy ranch uh, if you don't have the links and passwords uh send me your email in discord uh so the link is in the description you can join the discord just accept the rules and then send me a direct message uh let me know who you are from youtube uh give me your email address and i will email you the links and passwords but otherwise come link up and gather um, cause we'll be there, like I said, round the clock. Uh, otherwise we'll see you tomorrow for the show. So in the name of the Darwin, the Dawkins and the Christopher Hitchens, science bless you all. Thanks for watching. Poof. She don't know I tried my all She don't know I sprung in the storm But I'm going in the winter So we good to the fall Remember how I told you I get it and I win Now I'm got it You ain't answering my call Wonder if I been moving too strong Maybe I just been moving too balls Really hate when the feeling get lost Nowadays she just dodge my calls And the game don't lose like Paul Young legend Miss John like Wall And I wish you never met like Carl Dick ain't laid down like law Made plans but you cancel them all I was just trying to splurge in the mall Now I'm home stacking bread till you call It's time to roll she tryna slide, we smoking za. Stop back and shy. Cause you a demon when I get between your thighs, girl. You like my rib, you know I need you by my side, girl. It's time to roll. She tryna ride, we smoking. Stop back and shy. Cause you a demon when I get between your thighs, girl. You like my rib, you know I need you by my side, girl. We smoking that za. I'm trying to get high. She said that she not ready for lust, I waste my time I, waste my time. I got demons in my closet, I can't, hide. I can't hide I did all my exes wrong, they wish I died, they wish I died. Damn, I tried They won't believe me when I say this, oh my God, oh my God What a blessing, hello Phoenix, that's my twin I told these hoes, they won't get my heart again, not again Cause they were missing when I needed just a friend They were missing, yeah, they all were missing Slow, they hit the blunt and started trippin' My daughter about to be five I ain't got no time to be bitchin' I'm still reminiscing We ain't had no fun